From an early age, it was pretty clear that Richard Chase wasn't a normal kid. By the time he was five, he had an obsession with killing animals and drinking their blood. His heavy drug and alcohol use combined with his numerous mental health issues caused him to develop hypochondria. While hospitalized, Chase frequently complained of his heart occasionally stopping or someone having stolen his pulmonary artery. In 1977, after a stay in the mental hospital, he was found naked in a field with his body smeared in cow's blood. After this bizarre incident, Richard's bloodthirst became unquenchable. Welcome to History's Biggest Villains. Richard Trenton Chase was born May 23, 1950 in Sacramento, California. Chase was disturbed and unhappy as a child, and his symptoms grew worse as he got older. He set several small fires, frequently went to bed, and displayed signs of cruelty towards animals. These three symptoms are known as the McDonald Triad, founded by psychiatrist J.M. McDonald in 1963 as a predictor to sociopathy. Chase's problems grew worse when his father kicked him out of the house. Without supervision, he turned to alcohol and experimented with weed and LSD. As someone with severe mental health issues, the drugs took a huge toll on his psyche. He soon became convinced that his heart had stopped, thinking that he was a walking corpse. Fearing that he lacked vitamin C, he pressed oranges to the skin of his forehead, believing that his brain would absorb the nutrients directly. He even felt that his cranial bones had split apart in his skull and begun to shift underneath his skin changing places and jumbling like puzzle pieces. He shaved his head in an effort to monitor their movements. At the age of 25, he was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and institutionalized in 1975. His strange fascination with blood earned him the nickname Dracula among the mental hospital staff, who witnessed him kill and attempt to drink the blood of several birds to try to stave off the effects of a poison that he thought was slowly turning his own blood into powder. In 1976, he gave himself blood poisoning by injecting himself with rabbit's blood, leading to another stay in the mental hospital. However, the hospital released him to stay with his mother despite several similar instances occurring. Though Richard was released to his mom, there was nothing that forced him to stay with her. He soon moved out, later saying that he thought his mother was poisoning him. He later moved into an apartment with a group of young men that he was friends with. The mental hospital stays didn't help as he kept showing this unusual behavior. Notably excessive drug abuse with the affinity for walking around the apartment naked. After this, his roommates asked him to leave. Richard refused to move, so all his roommates abandoned the apartment, leaving him on his own. Once again, he began capturing and killing small animals. He would eat them raw or blend their organs with soda to drink. On one occasion in 1977, Richard greeted his mother at the door holding a dead cat. He then ripped it open and smeared its blood on himself. His mother just went inside the house and didn't report the incident. In August of that year, police officers of Nevada came upon Richard's truck stuck in the sand. Inside they found a bucket of cow's blood, a cow liver, and two guns. Chase was found nearby, naked and screaming, with cow's blood covering his entire body. He claimed the blood had leaked out of his own flesh. He was arrested but released, with the U.S. Attorney's Office deciding not to prosecute him. Chase continued to buy and capture small animals to eat and drink their blood. He also bought a 22 caliber semi-automatic pistol, a weapon that he shot into a woman's Sacramento house, but he was tired of killing animals for his blood sacrifices. So now he decided to experiment on humans. On December 29th, 1977, Ambrose Griffin, a 51-year-old engineer, was carrying groceries into his house when he was shot dead by Richard in a drive-by shooting. Chase wasn't caught for this, but the investigation turned up a 12-year-old boy who reported being shot at by a man in a car who looked like Chase. It was also revealed through forensic analysis of the bullets in the Griffin shooting that the same gun had been used to fire into another woman's home two days earlier. Throughout January of 1978, Chase was witnessed in the area acting strange, trespassing on people's property, and making those around him uncomfortable. Nancy Holden was approached in a grocery store by a disheveled man who recognized her. She was surprised to learn that it was Rick Chase from high school. She couldn't believe that the man that she remembered had transformed into the malnourished, grimy, agitated creep that made her very uncomfortable. Chase followed her out to her car, but she managed to lock the doors and drive away. Dawn Larson, one of Chase's neighbors, reported an incident where Richard asking her for a cigarette. She gave him one, but then he held her down until she gave him the entire pack. Then he let her go. A few weeks later, Gene Layton reported Richard appearing at her patio door. When he pulled at the handle, it was locked. 
Then he went to some windows that were also locked. He then returned to the door and stared at Jean, casually lighting a cigarette and leaving. Chase would later tell investigators that he considered locked doors a sign that he wasn't welcome into the house, but unlocked doors were an invitation to enter. Chase then entered the home of Robert and Barbara Edwards, who arrived home from grocery shopping to hear a noise. Suddenly, Richard came running around the corner towards them, but managed to get out of Robert's way. The couple found their home ransacked, and Chase had urinated and defecated on their infant son's baby clothes and bed. Chase then entered the home of David and Teresa Wallen. David was at work, but Teresa, who was three months pregnant, was home and just taking out the trash when suddenly Richard was in the home. He shot her three times, killing her instantly. Chase then raped her corpse and disemboweled and disfigured her body with a knife. In the process, he spread her blood all over his hands and face while drinking it from a discarded yogurt container. He took some of her body parts with him, also stuffing dog feces in her mouth before he left. Several days later, Richard Chase came upon the home of 38-year-old Evelyn Miroff, and her door was unlocked. She was in the bath, but her 51-year-old friend Dan Meredith was watching Evelyn's 6-year-old son, Jason, and her 22-month-old nephew, David. Dan went to the front hallway, encountering Richard as he entered the home. Dan was fatally shot in the head by Chase. After taking his keys and wallet, he followed Jason into his mother's bedroom, shooting him twice, before also shooting his toddler cousin David. Chase entered the bathroom and shot Evelyn in the head. Just like the Teresa Wallen murder, Chase sodomized her body while consuming her blood. Then he allowed blood to pool in her abdomen before draining and drinking it. A young neighbor knocked on the door for a play date with Jason, startling Chase, who fled in Dan's car with some of Evelyn's internal organs in the body of 22-month-old David. David, leaving behind a bullet hole in the baby's pillow in his crib. He consumed David's brain matter and blood before Richard left him in a trash can at a nearby church. After the Teresa Wallen murder, FBI investigators Ross Vorpagel and Robert Ressler were brought in to help assess the case. Their profile of the killer was pretty accurate, making the determination that the killer would be a tall, skinny loner with a history of mental issues and a lack of hygiene. They characterized him as a disorganized killer due to the messiness of his crime scenes. He gave little thought to what evidence he left behind or the consequences of his actions. They also believed he would keep killing until he was stopped. Five days after the Wallen murder and one day after the Miroth murders, Nancy Holden, Chase's old high school friend, heard about the FBI profile and contacted authorities with information about her encounter with Chase at the grocery store. The police ran a background check on Chase and alarm bells went off immediately. They found his history of mental illness, weapons charges, drug busts, the arrest in Nevada, and his registration of a 22 caliber semi-automatic pistol. Law enforcement immediately went to Chase's apartment, where he was apprehended while trying to leave, wearing a bloodstained parka and shoes, with Dan Meredith's wallet in his pocket and pictures of the Miroff family. He was also carrying a bloody box with bloody wallpaper pieces and rags along with his gun. After Chase was taken into custody, a search of his apartment was a sickening scene. Most of the content of the kitchen, food, dishes, glasses, and a blender were covered in blood. The refrigerator was filled with human remains, including bone fragments, brain tissue, and other body parts. Pictures of human organs were found along with pet collars and a newspaper with pets for sale ads circled. As the prosecution was putting together his death penalty case, a janitor at the church found a box with the remains of a male baby inside. It was young David, who had been taken from the Miroth home after the killings. All of Chase's victims were now accounted for, and his trial began on January 2nd, 1979. Richard Chase was charged with six counts of murder. His defense team thought their only hope for a defense was to plead not guilty by reason of insanity, bolstered by the fact that he hadn't planned these crimes. Chase was examined by a dozen psychiatrists. He told the doctors that he was scared that his victims might come back for the dead, seeking vengeance, and that he thought the blood he drank was therapeutic. Chase took the stand in his own defense, likely the strategy to bolster his insanity plea. He looked terrible though, with hollow dim eyes and an extremely skinny frame, as his weight had dropped to 107 pounds, and his testimony reinforced that he was crazy. But it wasn't enough to convince the jury. On May 8th, 1979, the jury deliberated for five hours and came back with verdicts of first degree murder on all six counts. They also determined that Chase was legally sane and that he should be given a death sentence. FBI profiler Robert Ressler interviewed Chase a lot while he was in prison, concluding that Chase was as unbalanced and delusional as one could imagine. Chase believed that he had soap dish poisoning, which came from the melted residue under a bar of soap. 
He also thought that the residue was turning his blood into powder. Chase claimed that he was Jewish and that he had a Star of David on his forehead. He also believed that Nazis connected to UFOs were telepathically commanding him to kill so that he could restore his blood supply. He said that the UFOs followed him and that Chase suggested that the FBI could find them with a radar. After this, Richard began stockpiling his prescribed antidepressant Cinequan tablets and on December 26, 1980, he was found in his cell, sprawled upside down and hanging part way off his bunk, dead of toxic ingestion from a deliberate suicidal overdose. He was 30 years old. This case is just, it's so bizarre. Just, you're, like, how do you not see the signs? Like, this dude needed to be in a mental institution earlier and he needed to stay there like he's killing animals and drinking their blood your son comes to the house with a dead cat rips the cat open in front of you and drinks the cat's blood in front of you and you do nothing the mother is just as guilty because you can't love your son if you don't even think maybe my son needs help like, why is my son drinking blood? Why is he ripping apart animals? Why is he killing birds and drinking their organs? What? Is, what? what? I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. But this case was really insane. Um, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Leave a like if you did. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Don't forget to turn on my post notifications. Uh, thank you. Please be safe. Stay on the grind. Have a great day. I'm out. Peace.